Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the DataBits channel. I am your host, Brad. I am always your host on the DataBits channel. They have tried to get rid of me, but they just can't do it. So you're stuck with me. Today, we're going to look at the 3M brand projector recorder cartridge. Now, this particular technology came on the scene in the 1960s and did not last. Uh, apparently, it was uh, made obsolete by other display technologies, but this is a presentation technology. This is a way to sell a brand to an audience or sell a, in this case, a school to your audience or a school's programs to an audience. And what it does is it combines several technologies. It combines photographic slide film, like this Kodachrome slide here, made in the USA. It also combines the technology of floppy disks. Yes, even though floppy disks did not exist in the 1960s, 3M said, you know what? We don't care. We're gonna do it anyway. So that's what they did. And you'll see that here momentarily. Our journey to make our little presentation did not involve a computer like it does today. Like today, you can just open up PowerPoint and make your own slideshow and then you can just talk about it, right? Well, back then, you had to use something called a camera, a 35 millimeter camera filled with slide film, 35 millimeter slide film. So you'd go get your slide film, take your pictures, take the film out of the camera, and then go get it developed. And then back from the photographic lab would be these little guys here. So still images that you could project through a projector. And 3M said, you know what, let's make a system that will do the presentation all by itself. It's automated, okay? So here's how we're gonna do it. We're going to take a slide tray, a very large slide tray like this one here, and we're gonna fill it with these little cartridges. We're gonna fill it with 36 of them actually. Each cartridge will hold one photographic slide and on the other side of the cartridge is a magnetic disc. This disc is filled with grooves. It would be filled with grooves, much like those on a phonograph record. And so there would be an audio head that follows along these little grooves and records, embeds a magnetic signal onto the disc and is played back like a record on the inside of the machine. And at the same time, you're displaying this particular slide. So I could say, hey, here's a group of students and they're all knitting. And here's how this knitting is gonna be great for you and your kids if they decide to come to our school, right? And we'll see, a, a, we'll actually watch this presentation. It's kind of funny. Now, I will say that some of the slides were missing from this particular presentation. The audio is there but some of the slides are missing and I just had some random slides that I've inserted to uh, replace them. But in order for us to see this amazing technology in action, we must first look at the projector itself. And ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you the 3M sound slide system. Here it is, the projector that will do it all to delight your audiences, blow them away with your presentation, and also inform and educate them. You know what this thing reminds me of? If there was like a killer drone that was made in the 1960s, I think it would look like this thing. Uh, I was watching Oblivion the other day. It's got Tom Cruise in it, and there's these menacing drones in it. I think if those drones were made in the 60s, they would look like this. I mean, imagine like, this is the eye, you know, the camera that's looking at you. And then there would be like some compartments on the side that would open up and there'd be guns that come out. It was like, shoot at you. Yeah, that would be great. And it has quite a bit of weight to it too. We'll, uh, we'll weigh it here shortly. But first, let's look at its amazing features. On the top control panel of our secret projector drone, we have a volume control as well as a tone control, which really works more like a treble cut than anything. It's not really tone. We have a record level meter right here. 
we have an audible signal generator right here. Our main controls are here, so this is record, off, manual, and automatic. We have a lock button here, so in order to actually record, you have to press this button and this button together to put it in record mode. Right here we have a lever that does one thing and one thing only. It repeats the soundtrack on the particular cartridge. Then underneath that, or to its right actually, we have a remote control. It is wired and it gives us this functionality. Forward, reverse, and then an electronic focus control, which controls a motor which moves the lens, the killer lens, right here in the front. We also have a manual focus control right here. Now this is a long throw projection lens, which means it was designed to be put like in the middle of the room or in the back of the room even, and projected into a screen in the front of your audience. On the side of the unit, we have some jacks. These are quarter inch jacks, quarter inch audio jacks. From top to bottom, we have external speaker, recorder input, and microphone input. I would imagine that recorder input works as like an auxiliary input. So you could like plug a record player up to it or another tape deck of the time. Just below our jack panel is an exhaust port. This is where the hot air is sent out from the machine as it cools the projector bulb. We'll turn it around here to the front here and you'll see the speaker as well as the area where you insert the slide tray. And then on the side here, speaking of the slide tray, this little indicator window will show you which slide is currently being displayed, which slide number. And then on the back here we have the place where the slide tray is inserted. So it starts here, goes through, and comes out the front here. Here is a closer look at that menacing projector lens, which comes out or goes back in depending on where I set the focus. Using the handy dandy carrying handle on the top of the unit, I am able to place it on this scale to show you how much this thing weighs. It weighs 31 pounds, 0.8 ounces, which is also 14.084 kilograms. Something you may find interesting is this rare as hen's teeth power cord that this machine uses. Let me show it to you. It is a three-prong cord, nicknamed or also known as a Wurlitzer, Celestron, or Hewlett-Packard plug. I had to search high and low for one of these, and when I did find one, I had to pay $30 for it, because if you have one, apparently they're the same price as gold. So anyway, if it wasn't for this particular cord, I wouldn't be able to demonstrate this for you today as well as two other instruments in my collection that use this same chord. I have a 16 millimeter with eight track tape playing unit, and I also have a reel-to-reel -reel video recorder that use this very same cable. Removing this cover from the top of the unit reveals a couple of cool things on the inside. Actually, they can get rather hot. It says here, caution, lamp may be very hot. Disconnect the electrical power before removing. It also says insert pencil in hole to remove. Now this particular housing just lifts off of here, so I'm not sure why it says that we need to insert a pencil in there. In any case, the top of the lid, or the underside of the lid, shows us the part number for that particular lamp. It is a little funky. I haven't seen one quite like that before. Next to the lamp, we have a shutter. This shutter will block the light from hitting the slide and going through the projection lens in between slides. So you don't see anything while it changes the slide. The screen goes black. Just a little bit over from that area here. This is like the, I don't know, the slot where the slide comes up and is inserted into. Next to that is this giant metal drum. On the top of the drum, you'll see a small belt. This belt had to be replaced by yours truly in order to get the sound working and sounding proper. So basically, when I first started the unit up, the sound started to sound like this, and it was very distorted. But uh, putting a new belt in made the actual uh, narrator of the presentation sound like a human and not a scary robot.
The teachers who instruct our evening programs come from the parents and teachers who work and live in the community. The parents use their talents in cake decorating, sewing, knitting, ceramics, and other talents to help their neighbors develop new hobbies and improve on old ones. The certified teachers use their knowledge of academic subjects and teaching techniques to help the parents who teach and to give instruction in special areas of interest. Each school has a local advisory committee that is instrumental in developing activities and courses key to the needs and desires of the residents of a specific area. In this way, the activities of no two schools are exactly alike. The idea of our program is to extend the use of school facilities by children and adults in the community to enrich their lives and strengthen their bodies. This picture of a ceramics class illustrates the idea that children and adults are able to share and enjoy recreational leisure. Programs of extended education are designed to meet the specific needs of each local area plus recreational programs to provide a healthy outlet for youthful energy. These young children enjoy playing such games as Bull in the Middle, Farmer in the Dell, and London Bridges Falling Down. We have programs for adults and families. These special interest courses are designed to help adults and families become involved in solving community problems, gain valuable social contacts, and take part in physical activities that may be shared by children and their parents and grandparents. Karate. This class in karate is not designed to meet the needs of this specific community. Because these instructors do not wish to lose their amateur standing, they work without pay. We have provided the building, mats, and lights. The people have provided the interest. The class often has an attendance of over 50 participants. We have we have special programs designed to meet the needs in a specific area. Roller skating is an unusual activity that fits the needs of several of our communities. We have over 100 children taking part in the roller skating program at Washington Grade School. Programs such as this one are determined by the directors and the committee of interested citizens who aid him. Better known as archery was developed as a sport by Roger Asham, an English teacher in London in 1545. There are many archery clubs at universities and colleges. It is a sport enjoyed by many of our modern young ladies. This is a disciplined sport that can be enjoyed by the entire family. The archer must have a strong arm and a keen eye. Judo is a course designed to meet the needs of specific communities. Its main value is for self-defense, especially against a larger person. The young ladies participating in this class say that it gives them a feeling of confidence. We hope they never need to prove their proficiency. These men are a part of the team to help meet the needs of your community. The key to our entire community school program is a calculated leadership plan in which a community school leader is available to initiate, follow through, and make it easier for professionals and volunteers to serve. We are proud of the leadership provided by our community directors. These young men enable the leadership key to fit the community door. Let's take a look at the inside of this beautiful unit. So this is the bottom section here. Over here is the top section. Let's take a look at the individual components. So right here is the circuit board for our amplifier. And I can twirl around here and show you the underside. And you can see those high quality components there. They're high quality because I didn't have to replace anything. The amp just works, which is nice. This is a blower. It's not a blower motor, but it is a blower. And it is attached to a motor via a belt, which had to be replaced. And that motor right there looks just like the motors that were inside of the blind and handicapped record players that I used to repair way back in the day. There is that cover we removed earlier. Moving along over to the top or the bottom side I should say. Here is our speaker. Here is our loading mechanism along with a another motor there for that loading mechanism. We have a power transformer, big blue capacitor right there. And then of course our mechanism here which is where all the fun happens. So this is where our slide cartridges are loaded into this part right here. The playback head, you can see right there, it says 3M on it. And that is what actually reads 
the magnetic sound from those discs and its supporting mechanism right there. Again, this is where our where our bulb goes right there. And our bulb is over here next to some gears that unfortunately disintegrated. Where were those gears? Those gears were right here. This was part of the electronic focus. So this motor here would be activated and then it would turn a, a, uh, a piece that comes around on this side and then attaches to the rest of the focus stuff. So our manual focus is right there. That's that pin you see right in the middle of your screen. And then that turns all of this stuff. Right here is the motor that turns our flywheel, which the flywheel is this part right here. And again, that flywheel turns our audio head and plays it around our floppy disk, which is glued to the cartridge on the inside. So let's go ahead and power it up and kind of let you see the action of what happens when a cartridge is in place and it's playing. Okay, so there's our cooling fan turning there along with the motor. And then over here, we have our flywheel turning with our rotating audio head. A calculated leadership plan in which a community school leader is available to initiate, follow through, and make it easier for professionals and volunteers to serve. We are proud of the leadership provided by our community directors. These young men enable the leadership key to fit the community door. This is Wade High School. The school has an enrollment of over 2,000 students. In the past, when the dismissal bell would ring at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the majority of the students would leave the building. The teachers would turn off the lights, and the custodians would lock the doors. However, things have changed in Toledo. The lights remain lit and the doors are open. Wade High School is now used by adults and children from 3.30 in the afternoon until 11 o'clock, five nights a week. The Little Red Schoolhouse is the symbol of the Plato Community School Program. In the early development of our country, the school was often the focal point of the community. People would gather at the school to discuss local problems and plan social activities. The Toledo Light of School Program aids modern Americans in advancing their academic and social education. Today's citizens also have the opportunity to develop skills in arts and crafts to enable them to fill their leisure time with meaningful activities. Type making is typical of activities of the Light of School program. The idea is to teach young people the various forms in arts and crafts. And so, my friends, this will conclude our time with the 3M Sound Slide Projector System. Appreciate you being here today, and please subscribe to the channel. Please share this video with at least 300 of your friends. And you can follow me on all my socials. All those are in the description. Also, big thanks to my Patreon patrons who have been so loyal over the years. You guys help fund this. And I appreciate it because I don't have like money laying around to buy all this stuff. So thanks again for your support. Appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to my next video showing you another piece of audiovisual vintage equipment. We'll see you then.